Hola everybody, this is Lucille Cookie Lou from Arizona and I'm here to announce that I am officially sleeved. So move over on that loser's bench and give me room to sit down because I'm joining the group. Okay, I want to give you an update on my journey and kind of give you a, a little, uh, little bit of uh, details on my experience. I met my girlfriend Maria, whom I haven't seen in over 40 years. We were high school buddies and this was a reunion for us. She was going to accompany me uh, to Puerto Vallarta and we were going to have a little reunion and while I was there I was going to have a little operation. So uh, I did get wheelchair access for the airport because it did help expedite my, my travels and my knees and my back were very uh, bad and uh, my back is still killing me actually right now. But um, I met Maria Phoenix Airport. We got on the plane to Puerto Vallarta. Uh, the gentleman that helped uh, expedite my travels in uh, via wheelchair got me to the curb. Dr. Hoya's transportation was waiting for me. They uh, transported us to the Cristal Hotel where I checked in with Maria. We had a lovely room. I was given an envelope by Natalie, his patient coordinator, uh, indicating what I should be doing, uh, how, how to contact her at the hotel, uh, at the uh, hospital on um, the 24th at 7.30 and she left some money for me to uh, pay for the cab. I had 60 pesos in there with an instruction sheet. The next couple of days Maria and I just uh, enjoyed the pool and the sun and the beach and we went to um, uh, Old Town Puerto Vallarta and we uh, went to a lovely church there, St. Guadalupe, and we walked the, uh, the streets and we went to uh, Malacan, which is a beautiful walkway by the um, ocean. And they have lots of shops and restaurants and, and street entertainers and vendors and flea markets. And it was a lovely, um, a lovely experience for me. To, uh, even though I wasn't feeling too good, I was hobbling on my cane. But I'm glad that I did that, that I got to see um, uh, a little bit of... Uh, of the Mexican culture. It was really, really interesting. And I sat pretty much down at each meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and watched Maria eat. Thank God she's a health food fanatic and everything she put on her plate was not very appetizing for me. But uh, needless to say, I had my juice and my water and my chicken broth and uh, I kept myself very strict to the pre-op diet. Before you know it, um, um, uh, the 24th was upon me and it was time for me to uh, go meet Natalie at the Merrimed Hospital. Prior to that I had gone swimming and I was so sunburned from head to uh, chin, just red as a beet. So um, I uh, went down to Puerto Vallarta, um, uh, I got a cab and went to a Merrimed Hospital in Puerto Vallarta and the hospital was phenomenal, it was beautiful. They checked me in, uh, they weighed me, I got prepped in my room. The nurses were phenomenal. The care was excellent. I've never been cared for so well in the hospital my entire life. And they set me up with an IV and um, I sat there for a while in my bed and I, and I waited. And there was a lot of tests that I did not have to take because prior to my leaving I had a lot of tests done here in Arizona. Uh, I had Medicare just take care of uh, all the all that for me, as long as I had the insurance. I wanted to do as many uh, pre-op testing as I could, so I had chest X-ray, ultrasound on my tummy, I had um, blood work, and a complete cardiac workup, and I did get a um, release from the cardiologist here in Arizona that. Um, released me for, for surgery in Puerto Vallarta. So because I had all those tests, doctor, I brought the reports with me. Dr. Hoya said everything was excellent, everything was fine, and he didn't feel it necessary for me to do the test again. So as a result of that, I got expedited into the uh, operation a lot sooner than I, than I anticipated. Most people enter the hospital and they get set up and then they wait three, four hours before they actually have surgery. So because I didn't have to have those tests, I was expedited into surgery in probably about two hours time. 
So I went down to the um, room. I was wheeled down there on a gurney, and they scooted me over on this little bitty table, and I'm just kind of laying there, and the nurses were chatting with each other, blah, 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 you know, in Mexican, and there was a girl all garbed up with masks and drapes and getting the instruments ready, and uh, uh, she looked at me, and she says to me, are you nervous? And I went, no. She says, good, because everything is going to be okay. And that was nice, you know, to relax me when she said that. Uh, and then the other girls were chatting away. And I'm laying there, and I'm watching the clock, 10.30, quarter to 11, 11 o'clock. And they're chatting away, and I looked over and I said, I changed my mind. I think I want to go home. So she came over to me and she went, no, 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 no. She was embracing my hands and she says, oh, it's too late for that. I says, it's never too late for that. So uh, with that said, this doctor came in and I knew he wasn't Dr. Hoya. And uh, I looked at him and I said, um, is something wrong? I says, no, the surgeons are in here. I says, are we calling it off? Do I have to go home? He started to laugh. He says, no, no. We're not going to call anything off. He says, you're, you're, well, I'm going to put you to sleep now. I'm the anesthesiologist. And I says, oh, well, doctor, thank you so much for putting me to sleep because I really want to go to sleep. And, um, and I asked him what he was giving me. And he gave me the recipe of what was in the anesthesia. In the anesthesia. And then uh, he mentioned that propofol with Michael Jackson met his demise with. And they went, oh, I says, Michael Jackson died from that. And he says, my dear, I am not going to make you die. Don't worry, you will not die at these hands. So I said, well, thank you for that, doctor. And uh, next thing I know, I didn't feel drowsy or woozy. I don't remember being in, um, uh, in the recovery room. I don't remember trying to be... Uh, awakened in the recovery room. I don't remember seeing Dr. Hoyer or anybody come into the surgery. I, I just lost a whole gap of time. Next thing I remember, I was conscious and I saw the clock said about 10 after 2 and I was being wheeled into my room and they told me to scoot over from the gurney into my bed. And um, I had a big fat lip. I felt like, like something was wrong. And my girlfriend Maria was there and she says to me, what the hell did they do to you? You got a big fat lip. She says, what, did you have Botox while you were down there? I says, no. So uh, nurses came in. They started giving me pain medications and hooking up some antibiotic and some stuff for my stomach. And and um, I asked them what happened to my lip that I'm all swollen. So she says, well, that could be from the mouthpiece when they put the, the bougie tube down your throat. For, um, to get the cal calibration for the size of your stomach, it could be that it was just pressing hard up against my lip and that's why it's swollen and uh, it, it'll go away, which it did in about four or five days. I it was still there, but it was ebbing down. That was the only, quote, complication I can say I had. I had no gas pains uh, that most people suffer. I didn't have any nausea, not for one second did I have nausea. Uh, I just felt very tender in my stomach, uh, very sore and very tender, which of course is uh, normal to have. And uh, I just rested in the bed and um, it was very dry, very dry. I was dying for some water, but I knew that wouldn't be happening for a couple of days. Uh, so uh, I had a good night's rest that Friday evening. Uh, I woke up uh, on Saturday and the nurse came in and um, she told me that the doctor had uh, ordered me to have my leak test today. And usually they don't give you that until the, the day you go home. Uh, but anyway, she says, go get the leak test. And that was fine. You know, they kept apologizing that the stuff was going to be really bad tasting, but it really wasn't. So the leak test was fine. I go back up there. They tell me if I want to take a shower, I can, which I did. Uh, they tell me to wash everything from head to toe and save the tummy for the last. Take the bandages off and wash real good. And uh, dry off with the towel, which I did. Then Elonzo came in, one of my nurses, and rebandaged me. 
And again, pain medications and, you know, and uh, they gave me a little apple, apple juice to drink because the leak test proved to be fine, so I could now drink something. And I had some ice chips. And the next morning, on uh, uh, Sunday, uh, doctor, they gave me a little breakfast, actually, Sunday morning. They gave me some apple juice, a little bit of jello, and some herbal tea, which I did nurse until it was gone because I really felt they needed the fluids. Uh, soon after that, Dr. Uh, Oliver, Oliveris came in, a lovely surgeon who was uh, partners with Dr. Hoya, and uh, he gave me an explanation on what they did and what I was feeling because I did tell him that now that I was drinking, I was getting some symptoms and I wanted to make sure they were uh, natural, and he said they were. Uh, there was a lot of burping involved, a lot of grumbling, you know, from the fluid that I was drinking and a little bit of bloating. Uh, the second day I started feeling a little gas, uh, not painful gas, just, you know, time to do a little tooting type gas, which I did and eliminated that. And uh, uh, so he said everything was fine and he, uh, he could discharge me and that the following day, Monday, Dr. Espinoza would come into the Cristal and give me a final examination and some uh, prescriptions if I felt I needed some medication, but he did want me to have some antibiotics to take home with me. So Monday, Espinosa came, he gave me an, uh, a physical, my stomach was still a little swollen, he said that was fine, the incisions looked beautiful, uh, he took off the bandages and told me I could just wash them again a little bit and put some uh, bandaging that I brought with me. I had some three inch band-aids and that worked fine. And uh, we I spent the rest of the day in the hotel just relaxing. I sat on the patio. Uh, we packed up because we had to leave the following day, Tuesday afternoon at 12.30. We had to uh, check out, which we did. Took a uh, cab back to the airport. Again, I got wheelchair transportation through immigration, through customs, onto the plane. We flew back home here. And um, it was, uh, that was it. You know, it was really... Um, great experience. The nurses couldn't have treated anybody better. Uh, they usually would come in two at a time periodically, um, way off, and they never, any nurse ever came to an American hospital to take care of me. And they um, also had somebody that came in and asked me some questions about how my care was being uh, given, if I was, uh, had any complaints, if I was happy with it. They uh, asked me how many needle sticks it took to uh, take my blood, to set up the IV. Um, I said the needle sticks for the blood draw was uh, took two times, but that was my fault because I was really dehydrated. Did not drink enough water at all the day before I got there. But other than that, it was just two needle sticks in the IV and it was taken care of. And the nurses were excellent. And the uh, hospital room was absolutely gorgeous. It was a suite, actually. When you walk in, there's a sitting area, a large sitting area with a desk and a big um, uh, couch. And then there was a flat screen TV on the wall. And I think they use that for people that come and sleep over with you. Uh, they have their separate little quarters where they can sleep and watch TV and not disturb the patient. Then you walk down the hallway and you pass this huge, beautiful bathroom. And then a little bit further in, you see the hospital bed, another large couch, a recliner chair, artwork on the walls, nice window, um, big flat screen TV. I mean, it was really gorgeous. It was a state-of-the-art hospital. It was only seven months uh, old. And I, I, I was just, I felt like I was in a hotel room, a luxury hotel room. So um, I'm feeling fine uh, now. Uh, the stitches have not dissolved, and the doctor said that they are supposed to be dissolvable, but it's possible that they might not. So I will see my doctor in a day or two and have them taken out. So guys, that's about it. I had a great time. I do have a ton of pictures I will download for you. Thank you very much for your support. I thought of each and every one of you the whole time that I was there. And... Um, that's my update, and we're 15 minutes in, so I think I better cut it short. And um, just wanted to say, Cookie Lou is home, officially slaved, and feeling great. So I'll uh, talk to you again later, guys. Bye-bye.